So today I'm going to be doing a foundation road test on a clean foundation for oily combination skin. And I'm looking at the new Lawless Woke Up Like This foundation. You guys have been asking me to try this foundation, so I ordered it so that I could try it out for you guys and give you my verdict. So if you guys want to see how this foundation has worked on my over 40 combination oily skin over a period of several days using different primers, different powders, and different methods of application, just keep watching. I know you guys have been intrigued by this foundation. So have I. I always do start out reading you the claims of any foundation I review. There are 20 shades of this foundation. It retails for $46. It is available at Sephora. So with this foundation that is kind of hyped right now, you might be seeing the term clean AF. A lot of people think that the AF means, you know, what it's supposed to mean. But in this case, it means always free. Lawless Beauty itself is a clean brand. Their philosophy is that they're always free of things that are carcinogenic, toxic, hormone, and endocrine disrupting ingredients, as well as ingredients that have been linked to the formation of certain cancers. I think that's pretty important to talk about with not only this foundation, but with Lawless Beauty in general. So on the website, they actually have a whole laundry list of ingredients that they are free of and it's pretty extensive. I'm not gonna read all those ingredients, but they do say that any synthetic ingredients that they use in their formulas are naturally derived to help create beautiful, non-toxic products that look, feel, and perform at the level you need and expect them to. They also note that a lot of companies do market their products as clean, but then they replace them with ingredients that are better, but they're still toxic. So they really don't take the term natural lightly. So just a little bit about Annie Lawless, who is the founder of this brand. She is a certified holistic health coach, a yoga instructor, a lifestyle blogger, and she is the founder of one of the largest organic cold pressed juice companies in the United States. People are hearing that this is not only a good foundation in general, but it's a good clean foundation. So let's read about the claims of this foundation. It does say it is full coverage. It is good for any skin type, including sensitive, normal, dry, and combination. It does not say it's good for oily skin. It gives a natural finish with buildable coverage and it gives a fresh, radiant finish. It's a non-comedogenic, skin-nourishing formula that will not clog pores. It wears comfortably throughout the day with a lightweight feel that won't fade or disappear. It has antioxidant-rich, skin-balancing oils and hydrating shea butter that helps support the skin's moisture barrier for a supple, youthful appearance. With this formula, you can achieve full coverage with a natural skin-like finish that never looks cakey or dry. This product is cruelty-free, non-comedogenic, silicone-free, perfume-free, non-toxic, and they do talk about how you might notice a slight marbling on the wall of the bottle because it's a high pigment formula. It does not affect the product inside the bottle. And so I did notice that on my bottle right when I got it and I was curious about that. So I'm glad they make that notation in the description so that we do know what's going on and why that does exist. I am right now on day two of trying this foundation out. I have tried it out on another day. That is the day of application I'm gonna show you and the first day of check-ins that I'm gonna show you. I am in the shade Sonoran. All my foundation shades are listed on my blog. You can get to them down in the description box with the link. If you feel like you might be similar in skin tone as me, you can go check out my foundation shade list and see what shades you might be in a foundation. So we will get started with the application. So we will see if this lawless foundation holds up in this humidity and heat that I live in with my oily combination skin. So stay tuned. I feel like sometimes the camera picks up more redness than what I actually see in the mirror. I see that when I look down in the monitor. There is some redness, but overall my skin is yellow toned in real life. It is really thick. When I shake it up, it doesn't really shake. It just kind of stays like that in the bottle. Um, so I don't know what this is gonna actually pump out like it. Huh. Okay, so it's kind of thick when you pump it out and that's what it looks like. So it does kind of run down the hand a little bit. The color looks pretty good. No primer over here, my Hourglass Veil Primer over here. And let's go in. Yeah, I like the color. I'm glad I didn't go a shade darker like I was going to. I would much rather bronze up than be too dark. It blends in really nicely. I do see a sheen for sure. I always set with powder, so that doesn't really matter. Doesn't really bother me. 
it's nicely yellow toned, but not too yellow toned. There is some neutral undertones to it. I'm looking up close in my mirror. It covered up that redness nicely on this side. It is very dewy. I'm gonna go in on the other side, but you can see the difference in the two sides. And I did not use a lot of foundation. This is how much I have on my hand. It's slowly running down. I would not even say I used half of maybe one and a half pumps. I couldn't quite get it all out in one pump. It kind of half squirted it out. So I'm gonna go back in, but I don't have a lot on my face. I feel like it covered well. So I'm gonna go in on this half and we'll see how much of that that I use on the prime side. I have a feeling I'm gonna need primer with this foundation because of how dewy it is. I feel like that dewiness has kind of settled a little bit. It's still dewy, but it looks a little bit less dewy than when I first set it. I still have this much on my hand, although it's down a little bit further on the hand. That's what I've got as far as coverage goes. I will see if I can build this up, have some sunspots down here. I don't expect to get complete full coverage out of this, just because a lot of times when I'm dealing with dewy, satiny foundations. I kind of feel like I end up getting, I don't know, a little bit cakey looking if I try to get really full coverage. I'm kind of wondering if I should just stick here as far as the coverage goes, which I am happy with. Like on an everyday basis, I'm good with this. And then just kind of covering up those sunspots a little bit with concealer. The pores look good. I don't think they're the best I've ever seen, but they look pretty good. Everything looks pretty smooth. There is still some redness on my nose. I'm just gonna get really quickly right here on the side of my nose. And that was easy. It looks good in the crevices of my nose. All right, I'm gonna finish my makeup and come back. We are back. I've talked before on my channel about how sometimes when I do my under eye area, how I scrunch my forehead up and sometimes foundations can gather in those little creases a lot of fun. This is one of those foundations. It doesn't quite set fully after you apply it. So it does gather in those little creases. So before I set with powder, I did have to just smooth that out with my finger. It's not a big deal. It did smooth out nicely with my finger and then the powder applied nicely over it. It looks really really good on the skin after setting with powder. I like it. I totally forgot to put on face concealer, so I have no concealer on any of my sunspots, no big deal. The powder I sat with today is the Becca Hydra Mist Powder. I'm gonna check in a few times today just to let you guys know how this is going, especially since this is the first day I've worn it. I'm in a dim parking garage right now. I don't know if you can see, it is a little bit shinier than what I normally am comfortable with. I don't want to blot yet because it's not greasy. I just want to see if it's gonna kind of start breaking up and gathering on me before I blot. Sometimes with foundations that do this and I start getting a little uncomfortable, I'll go ahead and touch them up with my translucent pressed powder and then they're really good for most of the rest of the day. If they're a good foundation for me, I may have to blot one more time, but they kind of give me that initial shine that I have to just touch up with and then they end up fine. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. So I'll keep you posted on that. I just filmed a check-in and realized you could not see how dewy my face was at all in the check-in, so I moved to a different location. You can see how dewy I am here. Hello, there is shine on my face. Without primer, with primer, I really don't think there's much of a difference between the two sides. You can see the mess behind me. We've been doing stuff back there. My thoughts for today are that it is dewier than what I am personally comfortable with in this hot and humid climate that I am in with my oily combination skin. But that said, even though it's been really dewy, I don't think it's worn horribly. Not as horribly as some other foundations that I have tried under similar circumstances. It has worn a little bit on my nose, but I actually did wipe my nose some today, and I don't think it wore as badly as I would normally think it would. In case you're wondering, yes, I have changed lip colors like four times today. I got 
some PR and then I just randomly slapped on a different one. It's just been one of those lip days where I change a lot. I feel like it kind of is settling a little bit into my two forehead lines. Mm -hmm. Just a tiny bit though, not a lot. I feel like it has kind of come off of the sides of my nose just a little bit and my chin is looking a little bit red and my blush has kind of faded. I feel like I've gone from like a work makeup look to more of just a natural makeup look, but not a haggard makeup look, even though I look shiny as all get out. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna try it with a different primer, different powder smart. We're gonna see how it goes. Here's what we're looking at today. It looks good. I've had it on about an hour. Uh, it usually looks good when I first apply it. That's nothing unusual. I'm going to wait until the summary to go over what I've done today because I really want to see how today wears. You'll see why during the summary. I kind of had an epiphany with this foundation this morning as I was applying it. I'll have more on that later, but hopefully with what I did today, we have a rock solid foundation going on, even in this heat and humidity. It's been about six hours that I've had this on now and I've gotten confirmation from Brooke that it is in fact shiny pretty much all over my face. Um, it has worn off where I've had my sunglasses but pretty much any foundation does that to me. I'm gonna save what I want to say for the summary just because it's kind of an overall as opposed to just today. I may have one more check-in or I may be just getting to the summary. I'm at the end of kind of a long day here to give you the summary. I feel like my lighting is looking a little bit green just because of how it's coming through my windows. My hair's looking a little flat. I forgot dry shampoo today. It's just been one of those days. I feel like I have worn this for about nine days now. I kept thinking I was going to film my summary at the end of a day and it wouldn't happen. So I kept re-wearing the foundation the next day in a different way to hopefully film the summary that day and it didn't happen and so on and so on. So here I am finally filming the summary for you guys. It's been a long day. I feel like I look kind of tired. I kind of had an epiphany about something while I was testing this out and I'll get into that in a minute. To start off, I love the packaging. I love anything in a nice sleek glass bottle with a pop. I think it's great. It does spread very easily for having such a thick consistency and it is very full coverage. I found I only needed about a half a pump for the kind of coverage that I like. Now on a daily basis, I like light to medium coverage foundations. If you're like me and that's what you like on an everyday basis, if you're looking for a radiant type of foundation, this may not be the foundation for you. We're gonna go through a little bit more on that in a minute, but I had kind of a hard time shearing this out. I usually prefer a beauty blender when I am applying thicker full coverage foundations or even thinner full coverage foundations because I find using a brush just gives me a little bit too much coverage and it can be a little bit streaky and just kind of build it a little bit too much. So a damp beauty blender is my preferred method to apply this foundation, but even using that method and just trying to get a tiny amount on the beauty blender, it was really hard just to get a medium coverage with this foundation. Now, full coverage doesn't look cakey. It's just a heavier look than I like for daytime. That's just a personal preference. It does give really pretty coverage right upon application, although on me, it is pretty shiny, no matter what primer I use, and of course without a primer. So I always set with powder. I set every foundation with powder because I have an oily T-zone, and if I don't, I get really shiny. I did notice that when I used specifically matte primers, it looked even fuller in coverage. I don't know if it stuck to those primers more and just built up more or what, but it just looked really full, and I didn't really like the coverage on those days because it just felt really heavy. And I'm thinking about those primers. It was the Becca Ever Matte Primer and Rimmel Stay Matte. It just depended on which primer. And unfortunately, that's really individual as to what primer works best for you as opposed to me. I mean, Hourglass Veil is normally my go-to no-fail primer. I've also found a new primer. I'll link it below, the Fleur de Vie primer. I don't have it here in front of me. I was looking to see if it was here. Both of those primers worked really well with it, but I did find that my makeup kind of faded towards the end of the day, although the foundation didn't really break up a lot. This is not a foundation that I personally am comfortable wearing all day because I get really shiny with it. It does claim to be a radiant foundation, and on me, it really is, especially in this hot and humid weather. Now, what happens with me is that after I usually complete a foundation road test or get really close to the end and I've made my verdict, 
I'll start to look at other people's reviews and see what they're saying. And they're all over the map for this foundation. It's a very, your mileage may vary type of foundation. And it may have to do with just skin chemistry along with the weather and the climate and the skincare and primers that we're all using. All of that works, I think, to create what is the perfect or not perfect foundation for us. This foundation consistently, no matter what primer and powder I use, and even with a setting spray, it consistently creased in this little forehead line. I'm actually going to zoom you in right now and show you. So you see right here, it's just gathered in that forehead line. And today I decided to go to town with my Gerard Slay All Day setting spray, which I normally really love because it holds up for me when I've been hot and dancing and out in the humid weather, not all at once. But I put on my primer, I sprayed my setting spray, let it set for a minute, and then I put the foundation on and put on all my makeup, sprayed the setting spray again, thinking this is it, this is gonna be the day. And I still got shiny during the day, I still had the gather, foundation in the forehead lines and I feel like it's also coming off on my chin right there. But even though it would get shiny during the day, on most days I feel like my Color Cosmetics looked pretty decent. There were a few days where they kind of faded but even when they faded I never felt like I looked horrible. I do think it looks really good in photos though. So that is something you know that is pretty nice about this foundation. What I've realized about myself with foundations like this is that if I wear a full coverage foundation, I'm not wearing it during the day. I'm wearing it for a special event pretty much exclusively. And if I'm going to a special event, I do not want that full coverage foundation or even medium coverage foundation to be dewy or radiant. I don't wanna to have to check in on myself. I don't wanna to have to pull out a mirror. I want it to be matte but not flat or maybe demi-matte. I think I realized that during this foundation road test that there's just not really a place for this foundation for me in my life because it is radiant and it is full coverage, which means I'm not gonna wear it during the day. I'm not gonna wear it for a special event. So when am I really gonna wear it? I think that this probably could be good for some people. I mean, it obviously is. There are people out here that like it. Maybe if I lived in a drier climate or maybe if my skin was a little bit more normal. I tried it in so many different ways. I tried so many different powders and primers. I tried it with setting sprays. I tried sandwiching, like I said earlier, the setting spray between different layers. I tried the light dusting of powder between the primer and the foundation that made it a little bit cakier and I didn't need it any more full coverage than it already was. This is just not a foundation that that works for me in my particular climate with my particular skin type. Just like with anything else you may have a totally different experience but unfortunately this foundation road test was not a success for me and I really wanted it to be because it is so clean and it's free of everything bad. I'd love for Lawless to make a light coverage foundation or a medium coverage or maybe one that is more demi matte or even matte. I would love to try it for us oily skin people that don't want a radiant full coverage foundation. If you're not subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you here as part of the community on a regular basis. And if you haven't seen my other foundation road test, go check them out. They're up there and they could probably help you out. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.